Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888, and today we've got another gun gripe episode for you, and today we are going to be talking about HR 7115. It is a new house bill that's being proposed that we definitely have to oppose at every step. Make sure you call all your reps and complain, and make sure that they do not support this garbage piece of legislation. Uh, we want to talk about it a little bit. And you've probably seen some stuff floating around on the internet and a few people mentioning it already. Um, make sure you go over to the Truth About Guns. There's going to be an article in the comment section, not the comment section, but the uh, description box down below. And go over there and read the Truth About Guns article. It goes into some pretty good details, but it's a Second Amendment issue and it's also a First Amendment issue. And we're going to talk about why that's the case. And obviously we do oppose this and we think you should oppose it too. Uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> um, so what? What's the? So basically, it goes on. Says the proposed law would, and this is I'm paraphrasing Tim's words. Mm -hmm. uh, Military Arms Channel. I saw Tim's post here on Instagram. I'm just going to paraphrase uh, Tim here. He said this proposed law would outlaw 80% lowers. It would outlaw the discussion and promotion of them in social media. Mm -hmm. What does that even mean? Okay, it would require homemade firearms to have a serial number. It would outlaw making or selling. Um, anything that's like a gun but isn't a gun but can be made into a gun later mm -hmm. and it bans the sale of assault weapons parts kits that they say mm -hmm. and machine gun parts kits. So that would be basically like demilled parts kits that are sent in. Uh, you know, lots of guys <laughs> have SOTs and manufacturing license and they use those parts to make completely legal and legitimate, uh, you know, machine guns using those parts. So it would definitely put a stopper in a lot of those things, uh, perfectly legal. Um, you know, activities that we take on. So what's your uh, your take on some of this? Oh, I think, it's, got it pulled up I think it's a bunch of BS, I mean, of course, but who wouldn't? I mean, if you're a gun guy and you read this crap, you're like, <laughs> what in the world are these people thinking? All right, so the, the actual text of the bill goes into some pretty disturbing things. I mean, you know, Eric paraphrased a little bit of what Tim had to say about it, and then right. over on T-Tag, you know, it... it there, there's some interesting stuff in here. So, <laughs> Gun the, truth the on short, Instagram. Yeah, the short title. This act may be cited as the 3D Firearms Prohibitions Act. All right, so section two. Do-it-yourself assault weapon ban. So clearly there, they're going after home-built 80% receivers. Okay, Currently, you can purchase an 80% AR lower, 80% Glock frame, 80%... 1911 frame among others and you can mill these out in your home and you can legally manufacture your own firearm you give it your own serial number and then you're good to go okay it's yours and um, you don't have to go through a FFL uh, with a 4473 or anything like that there's no paper trail with it you just purchase the you know blank basically and you finish machine it out yourself and build it yourself that's been a thing for many many years people have manufactured firearms on their own for many many years and there's also a lot more people now that have access to cnc machines mm -hmm. in their homes right and there's plenty of cnc machine plans out <clears throat> there for ar-15 lowers it, it is nothing to write a program on a cnc machine mm -hmm. let the program run and bam you got an ar mm -hmm. receiver now it's a little bit more to it than that but with the advent mm -hmm. of many more home machinists, especially having access to really good CNC machines, not mm -hmm. to mention 3D printers, uh, that's mm -hmm. a thing that got thrown around a heck of a lot there for a while was mm -hmm. the whole idea of 3D printing uh, firearms parts. You know, that, that definitely wasn't okay with a lot of people. Um, but there's definitely nothing wrong with it. You can make your own firearm. It is not against the law. It's a completely lawful thing to be able to do. So mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear is that you can totally make a gun. It's mm -hmm. not a problem. So this, all, all this is basically in banned hazardous products. All right, it's it's uh, <laughs> notwithstanding section blah 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 of the Consumer Product Safety Act, the following should be considered banned hazardous products. So they want to ban these eighty percent receivers and such as hazardous products on the consumer level. Even though it's technically just a piece of aluminum or a piece yeah. of polymer or a literally, essentially, a mostly raw material. It's got a lot of far-reaching implications here. I mean, even just a raw blank block of aluminum, if you have a CNC machine, guess what? It could be a firearms Constructive receiver. possession or whatever they would call that. I mean, that. you know, th this thing could go way down the rabbit hole that we don't want to go down. But um, basically banning a firearms receiver casting or firearms receiver blank or unfinished handgun frame uh, that at the point of sale does not meet the definition of a firearm. 
Um, and then after purchase by the consumer can be completed by the consumer to a point in which the casting or blank functions as a firearm frame or receiver for a semi-automatic assault weapon or machine gun or the frame of a handgun. Well, guess what? Machine guns, new manufacture of machine guns are illegal. So are they saying that if you're an SOT or if you're a FFL 07 that you can't manufacture a newly produced machine gun? They can't tell a manufacturer what they can do. Manufacturer right. can just put in the variance and make it happen now. Yep. And another thing to consider, there's also 80% shotgun receivers. You can mm -hmm. make an 870 with an 80%. Yep. So it goes into talking about enforcement and all this by the um, Consumer Safety uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission shall peri periodically consult the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives regarding the effective right. strategies for and methods of enforcement. So basically, we're going to put this stuff into law, and then we're going to let someone else do it. We're going to worry about how we enforce it later right. and, and you know, let that be somebody else's yeah. problem. And then basically, as Eric said, prohibition of advertising do-it-yourself assault weapons. So they want to prohibit the advertising of said products on any electronic platform. Think about that for a minute. So it not only is it barring you from your Second Amendment rights, but then they're trying to say you can't say what you want. You can't that talk your First about Amendment it. rights are also now uh, under fire. I mean, this is the literally the equivalent of Nazi book burning. Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime you bar information from somebody, whether it's through you know banning somebody on your platform, like has happened to us, or in situations where they just want to go after you on all this random stuff, it, it's it's a scary thing. Any time, any time an administration of people and a government of people want to bar the free flow of, of legal and just completely normal information. See, it's, it's not like we're telling we're, that we're trying to go on. Basically, it's not like we're trying to go on YouTube and tell people how to make meth or how to, you know what I mean, how to do some like illegal, nefarious things or whatever. These are these are constitutionally protected things we're talking about, like owning firearms, building firearms, using firearms. I mean, all these things are constitutionally protected. Mm -hmm. And my right to talk about it, my freedom to be able to discuss it is constitutionally protected. So how far down the rabbit hole is this going to go before we get tired of it and we just say enough is enough? It's bullcrap. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have got to contact your reps on this. It's important that we fight. And I know in a lot of other videos, you know, we've mentioned how displeased we are with the NRA. And we certainly are displeased with a lot of their their uh, decisions that they've made and a lot of things that they've allowed to get swept under the rug. And look, I support Gun Owners of America. I think they're a good bunch of people. And, I, and I've, I've talked with Eric Pratt on normal mm -hmm. uh, uh, plenty of occasions. And you guys have seen him on our channel. I support GOA. But I'm going to tell you one thing, too. I am an NRA member just like Chad is. And I'm going to tell you one thing, too, that the NRA has really ticked me off because I've said it in previous videos, and I'll say it again. Why are we not picking from pro-gun legislation like ordering off a dang Taco Bell menu? Because we had Republican-controlled House, Senate, presidency for what? Two dang years that we've had control of this ship? And, we, and not four days after midterms, the Democrats have already slapped legislation on the table. They're proactive. They are, they are at least, one thing that I can say, they're at least holding true to what they are. Okay, you know what they are because you see what they're trying to do to you. At least you know where you stand with them because you know what they want to do to you. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is in the two years that the Republicans are in control of the House and the Senate and the presidency and we had to control of the ship, why was, why, where were the pro-gun bills on the desk four days after they took office? That's what I want to know. Because they don't really care about your rights either. So guys, don't assume that this is a one-sided issue. There's rhinos out there too. And the NRA has been playing dirty pool this whole time. And there's stuff going on behind the scenes. The NRA knows exactly what's going on. And I strongly disagree with the way that they've been handling this. They've been abusing the trust of their members. And I've, I've said this from day one. You, you can look up older gun gripes. You can look up all this stuff and see what we've talked about. We said it from day one. Where are the pro-gun Republicans putting in pro-gun legislation? Where are they? You want to hear something else that'll fire you up even more? Let's do it. All right, so this... Let's go, let's go. This, this wasn't something that I noticed was being discussed in some of the, the clips that I read about this bill. So this is section four of 7115. Requirement that homemade firearms have serial numbers. All right, well, I read that and I'm thinking, well, technically you already have to serialize it once it's a completed firearm. You know, you just have a personal serial number and that's it. This is different. Serial numbers for homemade firearms 
All right, this is the request. A person who has attained 18 years of age and desires to make a firearm or obtain a unique serial number or other identifying mark for a firearm may request a licensed dealer to issue a unique serial number or other identifying mark for the firearm, which request shall describe the firearm involved and state whether the firearm will be or is a handgun. So, more or less, if you build a firearm at home from an 80% receiver, you have to take it to a licensed <laughs> dealer and you have to transfer it to yourself through that dealer, filling out a 4473, paying a transfer fee, which is the entire point of an 80% receiver anyways is to avoid that crap. All right, well, Are look, you it, freaking kidding and me? And here's something else about it. They, they were wanting to talk so much about, oh, the Paperwork Reduction Act, and we have to reduce paperwork, and we have to do all this stuff. So now you're talking about, they changed the 4473, like, what, a year or two back? They made some changes mm -hmm. to it. So you would have to change the 4473 to a completely different document to reflect those types of acquisitions of serial numbers, so to speak, or whatever. It's just complete bogus bull crap. Absolutely. So you got to go through a dealer to do this crap, all right? <laughs> Here's another little piece, all right? Prohibitions and requirements. Ban on making firearm before obtaining a serial number. So you have to go and you have to transfer the firearm that you're making before, before you can it's even, even a make gun. It. Before it's even a, a gun. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the same thing that we deal with with the NFA and building SBRs. You have to ask permission before you can put a short barrel on top of your AR lower. Oh, wait a minute. You could just build a pistol. Oh, I oh wait a minute. I know. Come on, it's, guys. You know, it, it really, it does come down to, it. it is a giant nanny state. And I believe, and I'm going to try to play devil's advocate a little bit here. Bye. Trust me, I don't agree with them. I'm certainly not saying I agree with them. But to understand your enemy, you have to get inside of your enemy's head. You have to understand what your enemy's thinking. What are they thinking? Why do they want this? Why are the Democrats so adamant about taking guns away. Why is gun control such a cornerstone argument in their entire thing? And I, I think it helps with work for them. Like their job revolves around stripping you of rights and enslaving you and keeping you under the thumb of the administration. Maybe not under the thumb in the sense people may associate it with, but reliant on that administration, reliant on all the programs and the freebies and the promises and, and just all of these promises they try to make it's just, they know that free men will never submit mm -hmm. as long as they have a means to protect themselves. And free men aren't going to go along with their bullcrap ideas. People that work hard and people that pay their taxes and try their best to do an honest way in the world, they don't want their dealings meddled with. And they know that when they go too far down that road, that people are going to get sick of it and they're going to be pissed and they're not going to be okay with it. And guns are the cornerstone of how we protect our rights. So somebody who would take your firearms away, they want to take your rights away. This bill proves that. And that's just because how they start. it shows that not only do they not give two craps about your Second Amendment rights, they don't care about your First Amendment right either because they surely want to get rid of that too. They don't even want you talking about it. That's how scared they are. And the thing is, they're running scared. They are afraid of us. It is a morbid fear of something that they don't even have to be scared of. They have the assumption in their minds that we're out to get them, that we hate them, that, you know, all these things. You know, they don't realize that the law-abiding gun owners in this country are the gr one of the greatest assets we have as a society are the gun owners of this country. They're, I mean, it's the reason we don't get invaded. It's the reason nobody messes with us. It's the reason we live free. We can leave our doors unlocked at night. They want to take that away, and they want you to rely on them. See, when you protect yourself and your community, you don't need them for anything. And when you don't need them, they have no power over you, which basically makes their entire part of the political argument invalid. It's, it's the tiny steps toward a socialist state. That's what they want. And that's the they, bottom they line. Want it, they want to be able to go, oh, well, we don't care if you don't like what we think. You have to do it because you can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm because you don't have any guns to uh, do anything about it with. What are you going to do, right? And, oh, since you don't have any guns, we can tell you what you're going to say, when you're going to say it, and if you do say it and we don't like it, we're going to put you in a gulag. Yep. I, I'm telling you, that it's is some the real scariest Dude, thing about it. It's some real 1984 crap. If you have never read 1984 by George Orwell, 
you need to go and get it on audiobooks or something, and you need to read it and really think about what's going on in that fictional state. You know, it's it's not a tinfoil hat thing, guys. I mean, look, no, this is real. This is it, happening. This I, is the I know, kind of this is I the know, thought but, that's going through these people's heads. But here's a part of it too, and I, and I know I'm long winded here, but just bear with me. But part, yeah. <laughs> Let me. But, so so look, the, the part of the way that I look at it too is oh, God. everybody turns this into a political argument. The whole gun control thing becomes all of a sudden it's Democrat versus Republican, it's red versus blue, it's this person versus that person, this race versus that race, this religion versus that religion. Everybody picks a side and they toe the line, and then it's it's you're either with us or you're against us. But you'll find that a lot more people than you think that own guns are closer to that middle fence. We're closer to the area of, look, we don't want to tell anybody on the blue side how to live. We don't want to tell anybody on the red side how to live. All we want to do is be left alone, and we don't want you to mess with our rights. If if it's my right to own a gun, no one's going to tell me I can't own a gun. I'm not going to tell you that you have to own a gun. If you don't want to own a gun, don't want to, you don't have to own a gun, but don't tell us how to live. That is the giant issue at but, stake here. But but guns but guns are scary. Well, and, and that side and of the fence. If we take all the guns away, then there'll be less crime. Keep telling yourself that. But that side of the fence refuses to accept the reality that my opinion is my opinion, and I'm going to do what I need to do, and nothing you can say is going to impose your belief <laughs> on me, and you don't have any right to impose your belief on me. However, in, that, in the vein of that argument, it only applies to you. That's the problem. You can't compromise with somebody like that because they don't want any good for you. They want them to get all of the benefit and for you to take all of the risk and for you to gain nothing and them to gain everything. That's not compromise. That's not sacrifice. It's just giving up and it's not okay. All right. You want to hear Keep some going. more? You want to hear some more good Keep stuff? Keep going. What's behind door number three, Johnny? The well, tell them, Sam. <laughs> presentation of firearm for which the serial number is issued for verification by issuing dealer. All right, so the way I read this is you go to a dealer. Before you want to build the gun, you say, hey, I need a serial number for this 80% lower that I'm building. Okay, here's your serial number. All right, you have 90 days to present your engraved lower back to that dealer for verification on presentation, the licensed dealer shall verify that the serial number has been stamped on or otherwise permanently affixed to the firearm, and that the firearm matches the description provided by the person when the request for the serial number and identifying mark was made. Okay? This is fun, too. Ban on possession or transfer a firearm without a serial number. <laughs> but wait a minute. <laughs> if right. it doesn't have a serial number, it's a <gasps> ghost, ghost gun. gun. All right, so on, it shall be unlawful for any person... In, uh, uh, in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce to possess a uh, possess or transfer a firearm made after 1968. So, okay, this is a backdoor registration scheme. That's number one. Right. All right. This is pretty interesting here. All right. So this is a, a stipulation for the uh, serialization of a polymer framed receiver. Okay. If the firearm is made from polymer plastic, 3.7 ounces of material type 17.4 precipitation-hardened stainless steel <laughs> on which the unique serial number or identifying mark is stamped or otherwise permanently affixed are embedded within the plastic. 3.7 ounces, that's quite a bit of material, but you know, it's just, you see the Glock frames, they've got the little strip of metal in there. That's already a thing, okay? But it's a polymer receiver. There is, it's, there's nothing. There's it's, no magic there. You know, it's a, it's an 80%. It's not a firearm. So guess what? They're making your 80 percenters into firearms before they're even ever a firearm. All right. Exceptions. So there are exceptions. A licensed manufacturer. Law enforcement. <laughs> I mean, a firearm to which the serial number has been assigned pursuant to blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. Any pre-86 guns. Yeah. A firearm to which... Basically, if it was already a firearm. Yeah, a firearm to which a serial number has been assigned pursuant to Section 923 of this title or Chapter 53 of Entertainment of 1896. Yeah, so basically, you know, like uh, pre-86 machine guns and stuff like that or a licensed manufacturer is the way I read that. And then establishment of a traceability system. I mean, yeah. Yeah, okay. it goes into a lot of bull crap. Uh, are you freaking kidding me? And from what I understood, there, I'm not sure if this is going to get introduced you know, into a committee. It's already been assigned to a committee. Whether they'll get to it or not before the end of this legislative session, which the last week 
of the session is, I think, December 10th through the 13th. So if it doesn't make it into this session, it's going to make it into the new House, which is obviously democratically controlled. And it'll if it gets through committee, yeah, it'll get voted in the House, but it might pass the House. But whether it gets through the Senate is up to the rhinos and the NRA, whatever they want to do. Don't assume. Yeah, but the thing is, the NRA started all this mess when they wanted to compromise on bump stocks and they didn't take a stand against that bull crap. Yep. And when we had an opportunity these people to saw, get the SHARE Act and all these I other know, things pushed through, they oh, didn't jump on it. They, didn't, they didn't give us the opportunity <sighs> to take back some of our dang rights. They just sat on the sidelines and just let it blow by and let people forget about it. Mm. But you see that four, four days into this, the Democrats are already hot and heavy, just wanting more and more and more. They want to take more. Well, the thing where, is... Where are all the Republicans who are supposed to be pro-gun? That's what I want to know. The thing is, for the next two years, we're going to be talking a lot about this kind of crap. I guarantee it. But the thing is, we've got a divided divided uh, Congress and, you know, a supposed Republican in the uh, White House. I mean, I haven't seen anything positive come out of that, really. You know, f uh, for gun owners, sure, the economy, yeah, but gun owners, no. I mean, like Eric said before, we should have been picking and choosing which pro-gun bills we wanted to get through, but these people just didn't make it happen. You know, that's what, <laughs> I mean, that's what they were voted in it's for. It's very disappointing. I mean, it's all, disappointing. all this money that people have spent trying to support the NRA and hoping that they've got our backs, and I hate to bash the NRA because, you know, it just sucks. Well, just hold on. I, I just really fire. wish that they would do what they say they're going to do and fight for us. I mean, if there's a chance to get something back... Let's not just stop at, oh, well, we're going to, not one more step. No, no, we're going to stop you, and then we're going to push back. Why are we not pushing back? That's what I don't understand. Like, it's so well, dumb. I mean, these folks are so organized, they're getting this stuff in, and here we are bickering about, oh, well, this person's a FUD, or this person likes this type of gun or that type of gun. Who cares? If you're a gun owner, this affects you. And it really ticks me off that... I hate that we even have to, to spend time talking about this kind of stuff, but we have to get people fired up. You've got to contact your reps and tell them to oppose this at every turn, it, especially if you've got, if, you're, if your uh, representatives in your state you know might be on the fence or they might be a rhino, you have got to make sure you hold their feet to the fire and tell them that you will vote their butts out if they vote yay for this. You know, some of them are already voted out in the midterms here, and they won't even be, you know, they won't even be in session next year. I mean, but it's just, man, this whole thing is just, I, I knew it was coming. I mean, after after seeing the election results, like, all right, here we go. Here we go again. It feels like 2010 all over again. And we, we just, we have to maintain unity, and we cannot be complacent in yeah. this matter. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You know, there, there's even people within our own group that wants to, you know, divide people. Okay, they want to they want to just stir the pot and be jerks to everybody, and that's the wrong answer. Like we we've got to make sure that we are sticking together on this and that we are showing unity, that we're showing you know solidarity in this whole thing, or they they will conquer us from within. Our founding fathers warned of it a long time ago. They saw the writing on the wall a long time ago, and they warned that we would be divided from within. And we, we have to make sure that we hold these people accountable mm -hmm. and that we make them understand that we're not going to accept anything unconstitutional, you know, not only for the Second Amendment, but for the First Amendment. They're literally trampling on two of the most important rights you have in one package. It, it could not be a worse thing. I think it sends a very negative message and it shows mm -hmm. It just shows how bad that side really wants your guns. And like we've said before, you know, all this kind of crap is the equivalent of modern-day book burning. I mean, because, you know, the, the big social media outlets have been, you know, whether they want to admit it or not, it's been happening. You can just look at social media and you can see that they've been trumping, you know, like libertarian pages, conservative pages, pro-freedom pages, gun pages, stuff like that, all across the board, shadow banning people, you know, restricting their reach. You know, a, a page with a million followers should get more than 20 shares on right. a post. But they're just trampling this stuff out, you know, and they're trying to just make it disappear. And it's like, okay, well, we're not mainstream anymore, but the progressive socialist mentality is mainstream. That's what we like as these big conglomerates, you know, of information. And something's going to come to pass one of these days here soon with that crap because it ain't right. 
and something's got to give. Something really has to give. It's really they, unfair when these big when these big companies like Facebook and um, and Google and such have such a hold on on information. They literally have a monopoly on it, and there's laws against that. So something's going to come to pass one it's of these days. It's pretty scary to think about. We we've seen a pretty consistent run of legitimate shadow banning not only on instagram facebook mm -hmm. i mean youtube too it seems like a lot of our videos aren't reaching the people they used to reach and it's it's definitely you can tell there's some some trickery going on they're they're doing something on the back end absolutely and they've been very irresponsive to yep. any any of our uh, reaching out <clears throat> to them they just won't respond back nope. to us so i guess that you know play time's over i, I suppose i think uh like eric said you know the big takeaways from this video is you know Put your working boots on, people, and make sure that you've got all of your representatives' contact info, even if you've got new representatives that are coming in to the House and the Senate next year. Um, you need to have them on speed dial on your phone. You need to have their emails saved in your phone or your computer. And you need to have documentation ready to go to you know send to these people to call them, leave messages, hound the absolute crap out of these folks. And you know if, if you're, you're talking about a pro-gun uh, representative, by all means, support them. Say, hey, I, you know, I, uh, I don't want you voting on this, and I don't feel that you will. But I want to know what your feelings are on it. And uh, if you've got a staunchly anti-gun person, you need to make sure that you hold their feet to the fire, and you say, I do not support this one bit. You need to join local advocacy groups in your state. You need to join Gun Owners of America. And if the NRA gets their act together, support the largest, you know, gun organization as well. If you really want to, I mean, the thing is, I'm a life member, Eric's a life member, but. I won't give the NRA a dime until they get their act together. I am definitely disgruntled. I am a lifer, but I am disgruntled. But I will support Gun Owners of America all day long. Now, on you know? one, one, one good thing that I will say is that Adam Kraut's on the ballot now. He is. He got he, petitioned back on again, yep. so we'll be voting for him again come, I guess, February or March or so. I can't remember when the ballots go out. but It's a slow ship to turn, guys, yeah. but look, we're ticked at the NRA just like a lot of people are. But we can change the organization from within. We just have to keep fighting. Yep. You know, and we hope that if they're listening, they understand that we don't agree with some of the decisions they've made, but it's not too late for them to do the right thing. They have the power to lobby and do the right thing. They need to make sure that they're opposing all of this stuff, but also taking steps in the right direction to make sure we're getting some of these pro-gun bills put through too. I've been very, very ticked off about the lack of pro-gun legislation mm -hmm. that made it through in the last two years. Why? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Well, um, you know, if uh, I'll say this too. If, if any of you guys out there are waiting on the Hearing Protection Act, you can just kiss it bye bye Yeah. You know, SHARE Act, I mean, if you guys follow some of our previous videos... Well, we had a chance, but... We made it through committee, and it was ready to be voted on the House floor. Ryan pulled it from consideration after uh, Vegas happened. And it has not seen the light of day again, and it likely never will. It won't, you know. But you can't can't stop fighting, you know. But it would be nice to to backtrack a little bit and get some of our liberties back that we should have, anyways. You know, as far as the letter of the law is concerned. But it's just we're we're going to be in for a, a long two years, you know, fighting all this anti-gun BS that's going to come down the pipeline. Just wait and see. Guys, there's a lot of more gun gripes that we're going to have to be cutting, and I, I hope that you guys, you know, we're not trying to, you know, well, actually, we are trying to get you route up, because you need to get mad. <laughs> fired up, boy! You need to get fired up, because the, the Second Amendment is one of our most important, important rights that we have. It gives all the other rights teeth. It gives us all the ability to, to fight continuously and to protect all of the other rights. And the rights of people who maybe maybe they don't own guns, but doesn't mean their rights aren't worth protecting. Mm -hmm. We still have to protect everyone's right, regardless of what their affiliation is with the Second Amendment. You can't hide from the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment still protects you even if you don't love the Second Amendment. That's the beauty of it. Is it doesn't see a left side, a right side. Mm -hmm. It doesn't see a blue side or a red side. All the Second Amendment knows is it is your right. Mm -hmm. And whether you choose to exercise, it's up to you. And I think it's it's a travesty to not exercise your Second Amendment rights. It's important to be a gun owner. It's important to be active politically as a gun owner. And if not you be own complacent. A, right. If you own a gun, you are engaged in a political fight whether you like it or not because you are now their enemy. <laughs> they hate you because you own a gun. Well, I guess all the folks that were complacent in the past two years are getting woke up now. Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully. Look, guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. We have more gun gripes on the way. 
Thank you so much for your support. Those of you who purchase uh, man cans to support our efforts, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Those funds are graciously appreciated. They go right back into allowing us to put out this content for you guys. Uh, Patreon support. Uh, if you guys support us on Patreon, uh, that supports us. If you go over to our website, www.iwriteveteran8888.com, go over to the apparel, uh, any of the t-shirts that we sell, hats, merchandise, anything that's for sale on our website, if you go over there and check it out, anything you buy supports the channel directly. So whether you purchase a man can over on the website, apparel, uh, any, any merch that's over there, all of those funds go back to support us. Or if you love these videos, consider donating a buck on Patreon. It's only a dollar. You're not going to miss it. And it goes right back into supporting these videos. If you consume the content and you love it, guys, consider supporting us. It re we really, really need it right now more than ever. And guys, consider joining GOA. You know, even if, look, I'm even going to say, join the NRA if, if you feel like you, it, you can make a difference by voting within the organization, consider joining. I, I, I personally am not going to be giving them another dime until they change their ways. But look, we have to unify right now. We have to show solidarity. We cannot be complacent. No matter what flag you fly under in terms of political organizations, in terms of what gun groups that you, you pose under, whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter who you support. Hold them accountable. All right? That's important. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your day, guys. Make sure uh, you know you subscribe. Click that notification bell so you get our videos. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you for watching. And uh, this has been uh, Gun Gripes. Mm -hmm. We have many more videos on the way. We'll see you next time. See you guys.